Hi everyone, how are you all doing? You've clicked on this video because your car may have a misfire or has a misfire. This video is aimed at the Mercedes 350 SLK R171 series, which is ours, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a Mercedes. It could be any car. You can have a V8, V12, V10, anything with a petrol engine that has ignition coils or spark plugs will develop a misfire at some point in its life. So what's happened to this then? Uh, the car has generally, we've had it for a year and it's run perfect throughout the year. Suddenly one day we come to fire up the car, we drive it away, we park it at traffic lights and we can feel a shudder. Every, every second or two we feel a shudder in the, in, the, in the seats and the engine starts to die and we notice on the speedometer that there's a, there is a flutter, a slight flutter and drop in the idle. But when we apply some throttle the car runs fine which makes me believe it is definitely aimed at the ignition coils or a spark plug. So we're going to take this apart and I'm going to show you how to diagnose the problem on the Mercedes and you can use this practice on any ignition coil. Let's get to it. So you can see the idle. Okay, so I can feel it more than you can see it, but the idle is just all over the place. It's struggling to keep itself afloat there. Let's get this, uh, let's get these coils checked. So we're going to start by removing this cover panel here, which simply just clicks off like that. Grab it at the bottom, pull it away, and away it goes. Next thing, there's a clip behind here which holds the air filter on, push it forward like that. We're going to pull these intake ducts off. Very easy to take apart this car. And then we're going to get to the air box, which is just simply a lift off job. There we go. Don't forget to set the hose there. And that's it. So we can now access the ignition coils. The first thing would occur to me when I'm diagnosing this problem is it, it could be one ignition coil, it could be two, three, it could be four. Um, I would point towards the ones that look the oldest, which is this one. Some of these ignition coils will have labels on them that will be cleaner than the others, That's simply because they may have been individually replaced in their lifetime. Um, this one here is a completely different colour to all the rest of them. I'll show you that. So as you can see, this coil to me looks or appears to be the oldest. The other ones are completely different. That one may have been in when the car was manufactured, we just don't know. This one looks like I'd say the newest. They're all Bosch. We're gonna aim straight for this one. So we're going to need a torque screw bit. If these are tight, let's see how tight they are. They're pretty loose, but just in case these are tight, a little tip to get a little bit more torque on them is use a ring spanner to apply a bit more pressure. They shouldn't really be too tight. You can get this one. I don't like torque screws. I always find them awkward and fiddly. We've got that there. Pardon me if I'm uh, obscuring the video. It would be an idea to take all these coils out and check each one. I'm going to show you how to check them. You'll need a voltmeter. So this little clip here, the fastener, You simply push down, push down the back. It should pull out, give it a little bit of a wiggle. Let's take that out of there. It's pretty awkward to get to. There we go. So that's the coil. So we're gonna test 
the windings on this coil right now. Let's see if it's a culprit. All right, so the next thing you're gonna need is a voltmeter. You will need a voltmeter to perform this test. Let's see if they're faulty. So when you get your voltmeter, we're gonna set this to ohms. We're gonna be doing a resistance test on this to see if the there is actually a complete circuit, just like that, within these coils. We shouldn't have a zero reading. We're looking for a reading of round about uh, 1.3 ohms, something like that. Mega ohms, should I say. Okay. So this is the coil, this is the suspected coil. I'm gonna take this off. Should pull away. There we go. Oh. So you got a piece missing in there. Where's that? There we go. We've got a piece missing in there. That could be part of the problem. If the insulation is damaged, then this can arc straight to the engine cover, to the cylinder head, and uh, that can cause our problem. The, the rubber's not perished, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that won't arc away. How's this happened? Well, someone could have had this out in the past, dropped it, cracked it, or some, because some of those coils appear to be replaced and there are very there are some scratches in here it looks to me that someone's been tested and they've jammed crocodile clips in just like this to get it round that that electrode and it's probably put stress on here and damaged it you don't you don't necessarily have to clip something onto the onto this you can just touch both ends of the circuit you're testing and it'll give you a reading what i'm going to do is clip this on here as you can see how i've got it it's touching that it's just down the side there so we'll give this coil a test we'll focus on that we're going to be testing This pin here, oh, we've got a reading already. A reading of 0.4 mega ohms, so that is low. It's still attached, the, still, the coil is still attached to the circuit, but it's probably deteriorating, it's very low. So that means this coil, it still works, but it is duff, it's on its way out. So that one, I would say, is our faulty coil. We have a new one here. Just remove that. Let's get this stuck on here. As we did before. And then we will test this pin to see what reading we get. There you go, instantly. That's a brand new coil. So the old one should give us the same reading. This pin here. Don't know which pin number that is. It's got a number one on it. Right. Um, I'm gonna test all the coils. I'm not gonna go through that in the video because I'm pretty sure by now you know how to do this. I'm going to put it back together and give it a try, see how it runs. I think we'll clip this on first. So you must make sure that it's pressed in there correctly. It will try and push away from you. Let's get these bolts in there. It's very easy to cross thread these. So if they go a little bit tight and be wary. Press down the coil and then turn.
So I would advise, if you're ever going to do a service on this car, which is pretty easy, I would advise that you buy various spark plugs and get ready to change your coils. That's in there nice. Right. Oh, already that's a nice idle. A nice smooth start, should I say. So, wait till the engine goes through its warm cycle. And we'll see if that idle holds steady. That's a lot better. It feels smooth as before. I could feel it vibrating uh, in my seat. Yeah. There we go. Island nice. Now if you want to do the air filters on this car, and here they are, they're simply under here. It's not an hard job to service this car at all. I'm going to turn that over and get them into position. My feet are squeaking on this floor. So, I need to align this with the induction there and that bash down I'm gonna need I'm gonna need two hands just to get this into position so I'll have to put the camera down two minutes So, when you're replacing this, just give it a good solid push. That way, the retaining clip can simply lock that in position. Next thing, make sure all your uh, ducts are in place. I'm not forgetting this little pipe here. One more piece, then we should be good to go. And that's it. So what a fantastic car the Mercedes is to work on. It took literally less than 30 minutes to diagnose and repair that problem. Luckily, I got to the faulty coil first. Now, if you ever have this problem with your car, it does not necessarily have to be a Mercedes engine. Every car will develop a misfire due to the coil packs or spark plugs at some point in its life. So get yourself a voltmeter and give them a test. Hope this helps and I'll see you next time.